karibuni sana siku ya leo kwenye uh, video kuhusu mbinu za kujibu mtihani wa karatasi ya yeah. biolojia na basi kama we ni mteja mpya ama what we call a, a new subscriber. subscriber then welcome to the channel and please subscribe kama wewe ni mteja wa kitambo yani wewe ni subscriber na kushukuru sana stay put karibuni thank you so much now i'll divert to swahili because hapo ndio kuswali yangu imeisha i think i've tried you to give me a thumbs up for that so yes uh today i'll tackle physiology as an aspect that is tested in your biology paper 3 exams be they internal exams at school or kcse now in this area the Kenya National Exam Council is very much interested in testing your skills the hands-on skills skills of manipulation those of observation even uh, interpretation and uh, many times students feel intimidated by this question so I want to tackle so that it's easier for you okay if this video makes sense to you and it's important for you then please subscribe please like and also hit the notification bell because I do videos of the same kind to help my students do better. There are five areas that I will handle. This is uh, areas like those of the food test, enzymes or enzyme controlled reactions, the lab laboratory or enzyme simulated reactions. We also have uh, cell physiology. That's where you have working osmosis, uh, diffusion, and then there is tropism and auxins, that's in a, in a, that's a form for topic. And then we have germination. To begin, in food test, we, have, we usually have four columns, right? These four columns are column number one is the column for food test or food substance. Take note of that. The food test or the food substance. Column number two is the procedure column. Three, observation. And lastly, the conclusion column. This is how it's marked. Food test is marked from left to right. So that means a student has to call column one to guarantee scoring in the other three columns and to earn the full mark across. What's important to note is the title of column one. Sometimes it is the test, sometimes it is food substance. So for the tests, it can be iodine, Benedict's, Burets, BCPIP, Emulsion, and Grease Spot. And for the food substance, they're usually starch, reducing sugar and non-reducing sugar, protein, vitamin C, and lipids, respectively, and in that order. So be keen to note that it's important to check the title. The title must be scored correctly for the other columns to score. Column number two procedure column. The Kenya National Exam Council that oversees the marking of your papers in KCSC is very, very hawk-eyed and keen when it comes to the procedure column also. And the areas that are tested here are the units of measurement. Does a student know the unit of measurements used? If there are only two acceptable ones, that's ML or centimeters cubed, choose one that you're comfortable with. Do not stroke them. The other one is correct spelling. The reagent must be spelled correctly. But take note of this. As we speak where we stand right now, it is acceptable to write the reagents in formula form. For example, copper 2 sulfate, ile tunanikanga kuzo 4, ile. You can write that under the procedure column as is, as long as the, 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 the formula is written correctly. Now, for those other reagents that are... In word form, like the Benedict solution, uh, in as much as the rules were a bit uh, less tight, when uh, the, the expectations as we, as we speak right now is that you can have the Benedict solution, for example, written with a small b at the beginning. But I would advise just to maintain the capital B because Benedict ideally is the person who discovered the reagent. So it's only fair and it's, it's grammatically correct to have the b begin with a capital letter. So stick to that. The other one is correct reference of the food substance. It's important to stick to the reference of food substance you're given in the question. If it is a filtrate B in the question, maintain that in the procedure. If it is suspension Q or 
uh, or um, solution R, let that be reflected also in your procedure column. The last element that is looked out for in the food test questions is procedures that require heating or absence thereof. So in this one, uh, we all know that uh, the test for non-reducing sugars and reducing sugars, where you, the, the, the main reagent there is Benedict solution, is the one that requires heating. But take note, remember that if it is test for the non-reducing sugar, then you must note that the heating be done in a water bath because of the presence of HCl in that particular mixture in a test tube. Also remember to say or note where you are putting this particular food substance in or the reagent. Be mean with words in this column. Remember the columns are always given very sp little space. So you, you, it, it was once joked somewhere that some students think in mother tongue first, then they translate it to English. <laughs> and mother tongue sometimes can be very wordy. So my advice would be be short and to the point. Be short and to the point. And remember to follow the procedure as is. Column three, observation. This is the, the, the column for uh, where a student notes down what they observed. And uh, many times the color change of the reagent is what is sought for. So when a particular uh, food test is positive, then you would have a color change. So examples are like starch. In the observation column, it is allowed that you just write blue black if it is a positive starch test or no color change if it's a negative starch test. Another way of writing the positive starch test is you can mention that the brown color of iodine pers persists. For example, if uh, the color change is not noted or the brown color of iodine is retained. That's the other way of noting or, or of uh, communicating the fact that there was no color change. For reducing sugars, the color changes are reflected based on the concentrations of the reducing sugars present in the food substance. This one, the colors expected are in this order. Blue, that is the original color or the initial color of the reagent, the Benedict solution. Green, yellow, orange, and blue. Red and brown, sorry, not blue. I'll go over that again. Blue, green, yellow, orange, brown. I want you to use this, this one to remember. Boy, girl, year of birth. Boy, girl, year of birth. Use that to remember the sequence of colors or color changes based on the concentrations of the food substances, of reducing sugar, sorry, in the food substances. If in a case where you have forgotten the sequence, then just write one color, one final color that you saw or that you observed at the end of the experiment when the mixture or the food substance uh, and the mixture that it had with the reagent has cooled after e after heating. For proteins, this one turns purple if the concentration of protein is high in the food substance and it turns violet when there is little protein. Do not stroke your observations. Do not stroke, I repeat, do not stroke your observations. For vitamin C, uh, uh, or the DCPAP test, remember to, uh, it's, it's, it's like the opposite of all the others. It's in this one, uh, the reagent is the one that is measured and uh, put first in the test tube, then the food substance follows. And in this case, if it is a positive test for vitamin C, then DCPAP is decolorized. Remember to communicate biological information in a logical and in a precise manner. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, you need to do so because the information I give you here is really important for your success in biology. Thank you for now. See you in the next video because part three of this video, I'll discuss cell physiology and how to go about tackling questions on cell physiology. And please remember, Last year's KCSE exam was most of the questions in paper three were tied uh, in paper two, sorry, and even part of paper three were tied questions, and many times 
self physiology questions are always tied where you're asked to observe in part a and then account for the observation that you have seen above so in tied questions you must score in that order such that if you don't score in part a then you're not scored in part b even if it's correct take note of that bye bye for now one more thing now how do you tell which which food substances or which food test to carry out check the reagents check the reagents that is the lead subscribe like this video is very useful you'll learn so much thank you